So many good things happened this past year, and we should feel great about all of that. I certainly do. But not everything that happened was terrific. We had some bad things happen as well, and one in particular that was simply horrific. And that, of course, was the murder of Rebecca Griego. That was a truly awful moment, and it was followed not shortly thereafter by incredible news out of Blacksburg, Virginia, and it reminded us of the perils of working in organizations that are so open and accessible, things that we make great, uh, important, apply great importance to, and something that's the core of who we are and what we do as an academic institution, to be open, accessible, and available to all of our citizens. But with that come risks. And one of those risks, of course, is that you can be subject to the behavior of truly disturbed people. We were reminded of the shocking truths of relationship violence in America and of mental illness. But we didn't just wring our hands. I was actually proud of how the University of Washington family responded to all of that. We immediately got together and said, what happened? What could we possibly do to help this family that's in such great pain and anguish right now? What can we do to help our colleagues who are similarly suffering? And what can we do to make sure that we've done everything humanly possible to never have something like this happen again? And with a great effort from lots of people throughout the past six months or so, we've instituted a number of programs, including a variety of violence prevention, educational programs, instituting the Husky Night Watch, creating the Violence Prevention and Response Team, starting the UW Safe Campus website so everyone knows where all of the resources are on campus, starting on all three campuses, single access phone lines so that you can get access to whatever resources you need with one phone call, the 685 safe number here in Seattle and 325 safe in Bothell and 629 safe at Tacoma. We've improved our emergency communication systems and we're going to be continuing to work on that in future times. And we're bound and determined to make sure that we learn from this tragedy and that we respond appropriately and that we are in fact well positioned to avoid such things in the future if it's humanly possible. But whether it was dealing with crises or building on our great successes, I want all of you to know that I am incredibly proud of what's happened in the years since I stood here last. You have all performed magnificently and it's something that gives me great, great pleasure. You need to also know that as I go around and talk to individuals in the community and in the nation, at other universities and even internationally, that performance has not been lost on them. They see what's going on here, they feel good about it, they're excited for us, and they know what good work you're doing. So thank you very much. But if that's where, we're, where we've been and what we've been doing, where are we going next? Well, in this particular case, there's actually a literal answer for that in a physical sense, because we are going other places physically. First of all, we're going west. Now, we're going west to get to the east, because for us, west is how you get to China. And we've just opened a new office in China, in Beijing, China. It doesn't have a physical place yet. Indeed, I was swapping email with people today to help ascertain exactly where in Beijing this office is going to be, but we have a director, Hank Wong, who is now working full-time for us. And what we want to have happen is we want to not just recognize the importance of Asia in general and China in particular, we want to make it enormously easier for all of you and all of your colleagues to do business there. If you think for a minute about the great success of our Rome Center, if a faculty member now wants to set up a class in Rome, they simply pick up the phone, call the Rome Center and say, hi, I'm so-and-so, I'd like to do a course there, here's an outline of it, what do I need to do? And they say, oh, you don't worry about logistics, we'll take care of all of that, you just have to put together the course, get it set up, and away you go, and bang, it happens. Imagine doing that same thing today in China. It's enormously more difficult. We need to move to a point where we can do business as fluidly and as easily in Asia as we can in Europe. And so our first step in that direction is, of course, to create this office. And I'm very, very excited about where it's going to lead us and the model that it might serve for other opportunities. The second direction where we're literally moving, apparently, is we're moving north. We've been instructed by the state that we are to create a new branch campus to serve Skagit Island and Snohomish counties. 
And we are working now with the governor's office, with a team of folks from, uh, from all three of our campuses to help identify where that campus might be, what that campus might look like, and how it will interface with the rest of the University of Washington. That process will move along, at least in terms of site location, pretty briskly because by mid-November, November 15th, we have to, we, the, the committee and the uh, state, have to turn into the legislature our general recommendations of where campuses could be located. It is unlikely, I think, that it will be a single point, but it will simply describe the virtues and vices of various opportunities. They've narrowed it down to about four locations in Snohomish County right now. We'll see where it really winds up. I always have to add when I talk about that campus that by saying, and oh, by the way, there's not a penny for any of that. I also hope that while we're moving physically, we can in the next year or two or three or four or five, do it faster. And by that I mean we're going to have to work this year and next pretty aggressively on dealing with some transportation planning questions. Sound Transit is coming, and it is coming to the corner of Husky Stadium parking lot. And along with it is going to be a big bloody mess. I mean, there's no other way to describe it. It is going to be a huge challenge for all of us, and we need to work together to make sure that it works for us, that it works for Sound Transit, that it works for the community. When it's done and when it's in, it's going to be great. You'll be able to get on a train either there or somewhere over in the U District, depending upon how the vote goes next month. Uh, hop on that train, go to the, go to the airport, uh, sometime soon go to the east side. It'll work very, very well for us. But the process is going to be sloppy, messy, and probably a little quarrelsome. We're going to work hard to be very good stewards, but also protect the interests of the University of Washington. Similarly, there is a lot of debate. Uh, right now, that's about it, on the 520 bridge. And we'll be engaged heavily in that. There's a 520 oversight committee right now that's working with a mediator. Uh, the mediator team has been hired by the legislature and the governor. We have staff people working on that team. And then there's a, a team that's uh, sitting on top of that, and I sit on that group. And we're having our first meeting uh, uh, next week, in fact. So we're going to be actively engaged in that process. So I would encourage you to stay tuned We'll see whether or not we move faster or whether we move at all. I think we're going to get it done, but it's going to also be a great challenge for us. But more important for all of us isn't where we're going physically necessarily. It's where we're going intellectually, where we're going strategically. What are the things that we need to focus on? Well, two years ago in this address, I sat and talked about some things that I thought five years hence we could do and do them extraordinarily well if we put our minds to it. So here we are approaching the halfway mark since I ticked off some of those things. And I want to talk briefly about some of those, not all of them. First of all, we talked about undergraduate education. In fact, the educational experience generally, both undergrad and graduate students, and the need for the UW to focus a lot of its attention on some of those areas, because we had not been as attentive as we needed to be. Well, what's happened since then? Well, a lot has happened since then. First, we recognized that to make that we had to make sure that we recruited and retained and supported the very best students we possibly could. And we started looking at our admissions process, our recruitment process, how we bring people into the university, and then how we supported them after the fact. As you well know, we completely changed our admission criteria and the admissions model for our undergraduates. And you also, by now, know the results have been spectacular. We have now brought students into the campus who are at least as well academically prepared as ever before, but they are economically, geographically, socially, culturally, racially, ethnically, in every way you want, more diverse. And they bring with them some of the most interesting traits in terms of leadership and background and experience. And every time I sit down and talk to our new students, I get more excited about this new model because I think we're bringing exactly the kind of students that we want at the UW to our institution. And the same thing happened again this year. In fact, Phil Ballinger is sitting right here. Phil sent me a note, just yesterday I guess it was, Phil sent me a note that we can now brag some more. When I talked about our average SAT scores, and by the way, I'm back in the stone age where you talk about the only two SAT scores. I can't quite get to three yet, Phil. So for basic comparison, I was always saying, well, you know, our average SAT score is about 1,200. It was kind of like the about one billion. Well, this year's freshman class, for the first time in our history, slid over that 1,200 barrier. In fact, it was 1,208. So we've now got, in fact, in terms of test scores, 
the best prepared students to ever come to the UW.